Underground infrastructure is critical to cities. Today, structural sensing, monitoring, and prognosis is all essential in developing smart cities. Here to chat with me is Driver Houston, Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Vermont. He has 30 years of experience in developing and implementing systems for measuring and controlling the state of structural and mechanical systems. Driver, welcome to the show. Hello. So let's talk about it. You really have done a lot of work on the underground infrastructure. Help us understand what really has been done when we look about technology and upgrades to the underground infrastructure. How important is that right now when we look at all the things that we're even talking about what the president talks about of needing to update and improve our infrastructure? Well, in the, particularly in cities, the underground infrastructure is really the lifeblood. It carries the water, gas, electricity. Even back in the ancient cities, uh, some found Ephesus and Turkey had sewers, uh, the Roman cities. But now the modern city, there's lots of uh, stuff under the city, and the city just wouldn't function without it. Most of it was put in a long time ago. It was built in as the city grew. And it's aging, but out of sight and unknown. It's also... Um, a key factor in the growth and vitality of cities as they move forward. And so when we talk about this underground infrastructure that we're referencing and you defined it as the water and things like this and it's aging, are we talking about all infrastructures are going through this and it's a, it's a problem in many cities or just a few cities? Oh, I would say it's a problem worldwide. Uh, cities, different cities have different specific problems. Also included is in the larger cities, the uh, tunnels and subways that are part of the underground infrastructure. What needs to be done, would you say, to upgrade these infrastructures? Is it a costly kind of thing to upgrade? Are they, they minor improvements? What are we talking about when you reference that? Oh, the upgrades can be very costly, particularly if you do them in the traditional method, which is to dig and excavate and completely replace. There's a variety of techniques that are becoming more popular that can uh, fix them without the major excavation. Some of those, particularly the uh, sewers, you can slip line them, put materials on the insides. There are robots that can go inside and do a lot of the work. Uh, some of the pipes, though, are uh, very aged, particularly the drinking water pipes, and they will need replaced. There's also lead pipes that are a big issue. Well, we'll talk about lead pipes is a huge issue there. But then when we talk about repairing all these, I, it's great to hear that robots go down there because we see a lot of yeah. issues with that. But who's responsible for this? Because if it's costly in replacing these, sending robots, we're talking about the sophistication of robots is great. But the idea of sending robots down there is costly. So who's, who's going to pay for all this? Oh, yes. Uh, who pays is a, a complicated question <laughs> because there's multiple private and public owners of these utilities and spaces. And so, indeed, it's, a very, it's not simple who pays and where the money comes from. Uh, water departments get their money from the rate payers. Uh, some of this is subsidized by tax money, sometimes not. Uh, most of the gas companies are commercial, and ultimately the ratepayers for the utilities pay for it. Let's talk about it. one city in particular. You did some work in Chattanooga, and they did some improvements there. Talk about that, so maybe we can hone in on, on some improvements, at least in one city. Yes, Chattanooga is uh, replacing some of the pipes. They're, they're doing a uh, gradual upgrade of the various infrastructure. Our particular role was rather narrow. We've been developing with the University of Tennessee Chattanooga some new devices to map what's under the ground. Uh, under the ground, it's out of sight. The owners of the infrastructure know approximately where it is, but where it is exactly uh, is unknown. It was buried 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. Uh, one way, two feet or the other is uh, not obvious. So we are, have been developing some new instruments to map this underground infrastructure, and we uh, did that down in, in Chattanooga. Um, 
Describe the mapping that you did, because that's a little bit of the sophistication we're talking about technology as new technology to be able to do this. And how's the university involved in that? Oh, oh yes. The mapping uh, brings uh, multiple uh, pieces together. One is the actual sensors to find the infrastructure under the ground. And we're, we've been using mostly ground penetrating radar, but there's also magnetic and acoustic sensors as well. These are above ground instruments that roll along the ground to find things. The big technical question with that, aside from the sensing, is to know where you are, how to map where you or register your position uh, within inches. And so we've been developing uh, methods mostly based on smartphones to do that. There are, there are other methods, but we've been developing some of these new methods. Combined with that are these large databases that have maps of the cities, uh, GIS systems, and some of the infrastructures, that's geographical information systems, and some of the infrastructures also drawn out on building information modeling uh, systems, BIM, although most of that is still essentially hand drawings. So driver, do you think looking at this right now, if we're using some of the best technology, we're going to be able to see where we can best improve some of the infrastructure and where the greatest needs are for improving it or upgrading it? Yes, and we're also, there's some really exciting possibilities for improving the visualization through augmented reality and virtual reality and uh, teams of people looking at augmented reality. So you get these three-dimensional images of what's under the city, uh, both for planning and for maintenance and repair. And when you look at that right now, when we look at the outlook, there's a lot of, I mean, we're gonna have to do this into a lot of cities, Chattanooga being one. Do you see the outlook being really bright for a lot, using a lot of sophisticated technology for just even the infrastructure right now, underground infrastructure that we're talking about right now? Oh, yes, I think because there's a real uh, cost leverage. Indeed, these new technologies cost money, but the, the value and ability to do this construction at lower cost quicker uh, will pay for itself. Uh, we, we already see this in some of these um, inspector robots for sewers. Those robots are now commercially available. Many cities have those. It's just uh, you can't fit, fit people down in the sewers all the time. And so, and you can't uh, dig holes just to see whether a pipe's leaking. And so there's all this um, technology that's um, going to make it a lot cheaper and less expensive to do this work. Well, Driver Houston, of the Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Vermont, thank you so much for being with us. And that's, we appreciate all your time today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. All right. Well, that's our Learn It for today.